Hashtag not all. That's what we hear whenever we try to criticize somebody. Whenever we try to criticize somebody of a specific group. We point out that we point to a terrorist attack and we hear not all Muslims. We point to some batshit crazy Marxist article and we hear not all whoever's being represented, right? It's always not all. It's always not all feminists. It's always not all Muslims. It's always not all Black Lives Matter. I'll be the first to admit that when it comes to this stage, when it comes to this field, I'm not the most well-equipped well -equipped player. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the most eloquent. I'm in dire need of a haircut. <sighs> but there are patterns forming here. There are patterns forming here that we really have ignored for far too long. I've seen basic, I mean fundamental basic things like freedom of the press, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. I've seen them shut down. I live in Canada. You know I heard about what happened when Rouche V tried to visit. I think the guy's a dick. I think he's his audience is probably, you know, not a good representation of manhood, per se. I think the guy's kind of, you know, a little scuzzy and a little sleazy. I don't want him silenced. I don't want a hate mob to follow the guy to his hotel, harassing him every step of the way. But that's what happened. The, the so-called Canadian hospitality was literally just dashed to the pavement when this guy tried to visit and tried to cater to his audience. You may disagree with Rushvi. Go right ahead. For the love of God, don't harass the fucker. Why would you do that? I frequent the internet from time to time. And from time to time, there's an article that always comes up. And it's usually something, you know, an economist will explain why the wage gap argument doesn't work. Uh, stati a statistician will explain why the one in four or one in five rape statistic is false. And you get this slew, this absolute slew of, vit of just maliciousness maligned against them. There's a new form of left-wing extremism that's already taken root and it's spreading like a cancer. Now, call me an alarmist. Feel free. Call me an alarmist. I, I really... <laughs> you may be right. And this may all blow over within a few years, but I don't think it's going to. Because there's always this defense. There's always this ready defense. Not all, not all of us are like that. But the thing is, that this progressive mentality is the backbone of it is collectivism and collectivism denies individualism but when you make the argument of not all feminists or not all Muslims or not all black lives matter you're betraying that collectivism of which these groups operate face facts they operate under a source of collectivism. In the case of Black Lives Matter, we have a movement that is essentially saying that there is institutionalized racism. That's collective mentality. You know, they're saying that all white people are racist. We hear that all the time. That's a collectivist mentality. And if you're putting forward that mentality, if you're putting forward this notion that white people or people of a certain skin color are inherently racist simply because of that skin color, 
or have inherited some kind of privilege based on that skin color. You are putting forward a very collectivist mentality. So to, to defend that mentality by saying that not everybody thinks that way is to deny the collectivism upon which that movement is founded. Such is my opinion, though. Like I said, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, so if you feel the need to correct me, I encourage you to do so. But come to think of it, feel free to correct me, feel free to respond. That's something we're not really seeing from this new progressive left wing, are we? We're seeing a lot of people trying to shut down the conversations. Draw back to the Ruch V example. Nobody actually cared about this guy. Nobody actually cared what he had to say. Well, okay, some people did. Presumably his audience did. But the people who were harassing him, the people who were following him back to his hotel, did not care about what he actually is saying. What they cared about, what they, what they cared about, is what they perceived him as saying. Rushvi is at worst a dick, but he's harmless. He's a harmless dick. That didn't matter to them. They didn't like what he was saying, so rather than just not listening, they opted to turn to a mob mentality and try to shut him down. I use him as an example because it is indicative the is indicative of what is happening to the left. It's going more and more extreme. It's it's evolving into this collectivist mentality. And it's being defended. We are seeing actions that most people, I would hope, find deplorable, defended in the name of such high principles, of such well, well and good intentions. We're seeing no platforming policies. We're seeing these at universities. Safe spaces. What the hell is a safe space? Life isn't safe. Why should yours be any different? We're seeing university student, students mollycoddled. And, again, if you, if you do not think this is the case, feel free to correct me. I would welcome the discussion. Which ultimately brings me to the point I want to make. I would welcome the discussion. Because I want to call the new left wing to task. As a lefty myself, growing up, I feel somewhat betrayed at what the left wing has become. I feel betrayed, somewhat, by my Prime Minister, who elected to fill his cabinet based not on merit, but based on its 2016. I feel betrayed that the left wing should feel that freedom of speech should only count to a certain degree. There is not a middle finger big enough to express my distaste and displeasure at the notion that just because you find something uncomfortable, it should be censored. If you think censorship is the correct form of action to take against an idea you disagree with, you have lost my dis you have lost any respect I could possibly have with you. The only way you destroy a bad idea is by challenging it. But if you censor that idea, you do not challenge that idea. You merely attempt to get the state to block it from your sensitive eyes and ears. That doesn't work. Yet the new left wing seems to think it does. And for that, and for many reasons, I call the left wing to task. I call to task anyone who believes in this collectivist mentality. I call to task anyone who understands the difference between liberalism and progressivism and would choose to be a progressive. 
I call to task anybody who would place the needs of the collective over the individual. I call to task the left wing. Because the thing is, it's all very well to point at the violent Muslim extremist, the raving feminazi, feminazi the ranting and raving and racist member of Black Lives Matter, whoever. It's all very well and good to point to these extreme cases and say that they are extreme cases, that they're the actions of just a choice few, just a small group of extremists. It's all very well to say that it is just a small group of extremists. But you're not really stopping them by saying that, are you? You're not really denying their actions. You're not really saying anything against the movement as a whole, are you? Today, that small band of extremists may be small, but they're getting bigger. They are. They're getting bigger. Today, it may be a small band. Tomorrow, it may be a mob. Hell, in some cases, it's already become a mob. And tomorrow, that mob will be bigger. A week down the line, it'll be even bigger. And if you don't call that mob to task by calling everybody who identifies with that mob to task, if you don't call them to task as individuals, as a collective, they will swallow you whole. The mob is getting bigger and bigger. And it is very left-wing. And a year down the road, two years, five years maybe, they will fly to the notion that they can make people better. And I do not hold to that. So I call the left-wing to task. And if any of you out there are as scared or as angry as I am about what's happening in our universities and in our public discussions, I urge you to do the same. The right wing sought to have its ideas in the public mind. The right wing thought that it could win in public discourse and debate, and we proved them wrong. Great minds like Hitchens and Harris and Dawkins tore down the right, wing, the right wing extremism. But their work isn't done. And we have to pick off, and we have to pick up where they left off. That's it for me. I'm out.